Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market uh, review for uh, February the 19th. I'm Harald Ambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's uh, main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect uh, the markets. But uh, before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation and should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or uh, product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read uh, the rest and then we will start our analysis. Okay, today I will talk about the rebound we had overnight uh, in, uh, in the Asian morning due to slowing virus cases. I will talk about the Euro which kept uh, bleeding after the disappointing German ZW survey. I will talk about the FOMC minutes that uh, are coming out today, the, USA, the UK CPIs for January and the Australia jobs data which uh, will be released uh, tonight during the Asian Morning Thursday. As for the rest of uh, today's events, we have Sweden CPIs for January, Canada CPIs for the same month, the American Petroleum Institute weekly report on crude oil inventories, and we also have four Fed speakers. So, as always, let's start with uh, the performance of the US dollar against uh, the other G10 currencies. Uh, the greenback traded higher or unchanged against the other G10s. It gained the most against uh, SEC, Kiwi and the Euro in that order while it traded virtually unchanged versus the Pound, the Aussie and the Canadian Dollar. Just by looking at the FX performance, we cannot derive uh, safe conclusions with regards to the broader market sentiment. Thus, we will turn our gaze to the equity world. Here we can see that most EU and US indices traded in, uh, in uh, the red, getting the torch from the Asian uh, bourses uh, yesterday, which slid after Apple warned of lower revenue and iPhone, uh, and iPhone shortages, shortages uh, for the first quarter of the year. That said, investors' uh, morale turned around again during the Asian morning today after the number of infected cases from the coronavirus slowed for the second consecutive day. We can see here that although Shanghai's uh, composite index slid 0.32%, Japan's Nikkei surged 0.89%. Uh, so as, uh, as I said, uh, the number of infected cases from the coronavirus uh, has slowed. However, the number of deaths accelerated uh, to 2009 from, from 1,873 on, um, on uh, Tuesday, adding to our view that the worst with regards to the virus is uh, not behind us yet. As we noted in the past, we expect uh, the slowdown in uh, deaths to come with a lack compared to the cases and with uh, the World Health Organization saying that it could take uh, 12 to 18 months for a coronavirus vaccine to, uh, to, to, to be found, things are not so encouraging at the, at the moment. Now, with regards to the markets, the rebound in Asian, uh, in Asian equities may have also been due to hopes that uh, the adopted measures to contain the virus may have been working or that uh, officials will roll out more, uh, more stimulus uh, if needed. Uh, on Monday, the, bank, the, the People's Bank of China cut interest rates on medium, on medium lending, while on Thursday it is expected to lower its benchmark alone prime rate. Now, as for our view, it has not uh, changed. We are still uh, reluctant to, to trust. We are still reluctant to trust a long-lasting recovery. For now, it seems that EU and US stock markets are waiting to get direction from the Asian ones, 
and this means that uh, they may also rebound today. However, we prefer to wait for data to show how much the virus has impacted the Chinese and by extend the global economy. Friday's preliminary PMIs for February may be key on that front, while the official Chinese indices which come out on February 29th could give us a first taste on how deep the scars of the world's second largest economy are. Big disappointments could well reverse once again risk appetite with investors abandoning risk assets in favor of safe, of safe havens. Now speaking about the first taste of the coronavirus impact, yesterday we got uh, Germany's ZW survey for February which uh, disappointed largely pushing the already wounded euro even lower. We can see on the graph here that euro tumbled broke below 108.25 and is now trading in territories last seen back in April 2017. Now, as I said, the ZEW survey pushed uh, the wounded euro even lower, perhaps raising speculation that uh, eurozone PMIs for the month due out on Friday may also, missed, uh, may also miss their estimates by a large margin. Disappointing data from uh, the Eurozone may continue dragging the common currency lower, with some investors perhaps uh, raising bets that the ECB may need to ease again in the months to come. However, our own view is that uh, given the bank's limited scope for further easing, officials may not rush into doing so. After all, an extension of the Euro's latest tumble may eventually prove somewhat supportive uh, for the bloc's economy as it, may as it may be a helping hand for inflation and exports. Now flying from the Euro area to the US, uh, today USD traders may be on the edge of their seats in anticipation of the minutes from the latest FOMC gathering. The message we got from that meeting was that uh, policy makers are not comfortable with inflation persi persistently under their 2% uh, target and with the core PC rate staying below that objective since December 2018 they may start thinking about rate cuts, rate cuts uh, again if this continues for more. At the press conference, Fed Chair Powell said that policy is not in a preset course and also acknowledged the risks uh, the coronavirus poses to the US economy, something he also did when he testified before uh, Congress last week. Now, although Powell insisted while testifying that rates are uh, appropriate at current levels for now, we will scan the minutes to see whether and how many of his colleagues are on the same page and how many have already started thinking about lower rates again. According to the Fed Fund Futures, investors are more than fully pricing in another cut to be delivered in uh, September, despite the December dot plot pointing to no action this year, and despite the better than expected employment and CPI data for January. I have the yields of the Fed Fund Futures uh, again on the presentation. You can see here that according to the yields, uh, to those yields, a rate cut of the 25 basis points is priced in for August, but given that we don't have an FOMC meeting uh, scheduled for August, I prefer to say that a 25 basis point uh, decrease is more, than fully sp is more than fully priced in for the September gathering. Now passing the ball to the pound, the British currency was among the main gainers yesterday despite the weaker than expected employment data for December. The unemployment rate held steady at its 45 uh, year low of 3.8% but average weekly earnings, both including and excluding bonuses, have slowed by more than anticipated. In any case, GBP traders ignored the data, which validates our view that they may pay more attention to releases pointing uh, to how the economy has been performing in the post-election era. After all, Bank of England policymakers clearly pointed out at their, at their latest meeting that uh, they will wait for data to confirm the positive signals from recent indicators, with inflation taking the first place on their list. The January, CPIs, uh, the January CPIs are released today, with uh, the headline rate expected to have risen to 1.6% year-over-year from 1.3% and the core rate to have ticked up to 1.5% from 1.4%. Having said that though, bearing in mind that the year-over-year -year change in Brent oil turned uh, negative in January, 
if uh, core inflation is set to accelerate, the headline rate uh, may rise by less than anticipated. In any case, a move in the desired direction may allow Bank of England policymakers to hold their fingers away from the cut button for a while more, especially after the resignation of Sajid Javid as finance minister, which sparked hopes of more, of more fiscal support. According to the CME MPC Sonia Futures and 25 basis points, basis points uh, decrease in, is uh, now nearly fully priced in for the November gathering. Here I have uh, the, the, the Sonia Futures for each uh, of the upcoming Bank of England gatherings and you can see that uh, a 25 basis points rate decrease is nearly fully priced in for uh, November. Now, the Aussie was also among the big winners, despite the wage price index for the fourth quarter coming at 2.2% year over year as the forecast suggested. Remember yesterday we noted that with inflation ticking up to 1.8% year over year during the quarter, a stable earnings rate would mean slowing real wages and this was the case. I have the graph uh, of uh, real wage growth in Australia updated here and you can see that following three months of uh, slowdown in um, in real wages uh, following three quarters excuse me of a slowdown in real wages we got another quarter of uh, slowing uh, earnings so slowing real wages may not be a pleasant development for rba policymakers but the aussie may have stood tall due to the increased uh, risk appetite during the asian morning today now focus for Aussie traders is likely to turn to, you, to Australia's employment report for January due out tonight during the Asia morning uh, Thursday. The unemployment rate is uh, expected to have rebounded back to 5.2% from 5.1% while the net change in employment is expected to reveal a slowdown in added jobs to 10k from 28.9k in December. Combined with uh, de declining real wage growth and unemployment rate still well above the 4.5% threshold which the RBA believes will start generating inflationary pressures may prompt market participants to bring forth the timing of when they anticipate another rate decrease by, by the bank and thereby bring the Aussie under some selling interest. Now, according to the ASX 30-day interbank cash rate futures implied, uh, implied uh, yield curve, market participants are, are almost pricing in another quarter point decrease to be delivered in uh, September. And here is a graph showing that uh, another cut is priced in for September. Now, as uh, for the rest of today's events, early in the EU session, in about half an hour, Sweden releases its inflation data for January. Both the CPI and CPIF rates are expected to have ticked down to 1.7% and 1.6% year over year from 1.8% and 1.7% respectively. That said, we repeat for the upteenth time that we will pay more attention to the core CPIF rate, which excludes the volatile items of energy. Now, in December, that rate ticked down to 1.7% year-over-year from 1.8%. At its uh, latest meeting, the Riksbank acknowledged that falling energy prices are expected to dampen inflation this year, but it expects the headline rate to be close to the 2% target afterwards. Thus, a modest slowdown in the headline rate is unlikely to tempt officials uh, altering their forward guidance, which suggests that the repo rate is expected to remain at 0% during almost the entire forecast period. That said, a notable slide in the core CPIF rate may raise concerns that the weakness in inflation may not be due to falling energy prices. This could raise speculation that officials may start rethinking their current policy stance and thereby push uh, the Swedish krona lower. Now, apart from Sweden, uh, from Sweden and uh, the UK, we also get January CPIs from Canada as well. The headline CPI is expected to have risen to 2.4% year over year from 2.2%, while the core one is anticipated to have ticked up to 1.8% year over year from 1.7%. Now, using again the logic that energy prices are somewhat correlated with the spread between the headline and core rates, the fact that the year over year change in WTI turned negative in January may not allow the headline inflation to accelerate that much. 
at its uh, previous gathering, the Bank of Canada removed uh, from the statement uh, the part saying that it is appropriate to maintain the current level of interest rates and instead noted that in determining the future path uh, for the bank's uh, policy interest rate, the governing council will be watching closely to see if the recent slowdown in growth is more persistent than forecast. This means that officials have opened the door to a rate cut, with Governor Polos confirming that at the press conference following the decision. Now, even if, uh, if headline inflation does not accelerate as expected, as long as it stays above 2%, it may allow Bank of Canada officials to stay away from the cut button, especially following January's better than expected employment report. Now in the US, besides the FOMC minutes, we also get the PPIs, building permits and housing starts, all for, ja all for January. The American Petroleum Institute weekly report on crude oil inventories is also coming out, but as it is always the case, no forecast is available. As for the speakers, we have four, f four Fed ones on our agenda. Those are the Atlanta Fed uh, President Rafael Bostic, the Cleveland President uh, Loretta Mester, Minneapolis President Neil Kashkari, and the Richmond uh, Fed President uh, Thomas Barkin. It would be interesting to hear what they have uh, to say about the Fed's future monetary policy plans, especially bearing in mind that we also get the FOMC minutes uh, today. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great day and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. For those who are interested in learning uh, about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at uh, 8 o'clock a.m. GMT time. So goodbye and have a great day.